Last but not least, let's talk about weirs. Two people are dead after kayaking over a deceptive Most people know that weirs can be super dangerous. There have been countless fatal incidents all over the world. In 2008, five people of the Swiss Army died in a tragic river rafting accident involving weirs in the Congo. Almost every year, there are some incidents in Switzerland and more than a few of them have been on the tour. Time is critical when someone is drowning. Rescue personnel is drilled not to endanger themselves. That's why rescue attempts from official rescue teams involving weirs can sometimes be quite complicated. Setups can include compressed air harpoons, helicopters, and sometimes up to 30 rescuers. That's why we do not rely on or expect public rescue teams to save us, and certainly not any passers-by. For someone without experience, getting in that water would be extremely dangerous. We are responsible for our own safety, but not for yours. We rely 100% on our body system. We are ready on the spot, well equipped and familiar with the environment. After all, there is no one that spent more time in flooded rivers than us. It's our element, it's where we feel at home. In this video, you can see how quickly a kayaker can react and save his friend. Most accidents, including weirs, happen to regular people just wanting to have a fun time on the water. Any experienced river surfer or kayaker would know how to free himself from these situations within a few seconds. Trying to fight currents or whirlpools will end in exhaustion, hypothermia and in extreme cases, death. But going with the current and exiting it where it slows down, that is like the first thing surf camps around the world teach you. At Weirs, you have recirculating currents and whirlpools. Furthermore, the water is filled with air bubbles, so the water almost doesn't carry you. There is only one way of getting out by yourself, although it may be against your natural instincts. You have to take a deep breath and go with the flow, underwater and dive with the current. Do you understand why people get stuck behind weirs? Well, the sad truth in most cases is because of their floating devices, keeping you in the backflow. If these victims had known how to react, they could have most likely freed themselves. It took us years to figure out the best measures for flood river surfing. Experienced kayakers are without a doubt the most valuable partners rescue teams could have in rivers. And I'm confident enough to put us on the second place experience-wise. I could very well imagine a rescue system that works together with kayakers and river surfers. It is important to note that diving away on the ground with the current does not necessarily work every time. Some weirs have deep scouring holes behind them, sometimes even undercutting the weir itself. If you dive in the wrong direction in these cases, you have a big problem. To stop the scouring behind weirs, the holes sometimes get filled up with boulders. This, however, introduces new hazards like foot entrapment. The position behind weirs is another equally dangerous hazard. A tree that got stuck behind a weir will act like a strainer. While water can pass with ease, a person will be pushed against the branches like a spaghetti noodle in a strainer. Weirs sometimes have iron beams or nasty rebars sticking out of the concrete. If it's already a known surf spot, get informed by someone that knows it. Double weirs are death traps. Stay away from them irrespective of the water level. If you have discovered a new surf spot, scouting the weir at different water levels is an absolute must. There are some waves we found that look perfect from the surface, but turn out to have very dangerous characteristics. We never surf these waves. New deposition can even happen at spots that you already know. Flood river surfing spots need to be checked on a regular basis. So with all these risks, it seems like the stupidest idea on earth to even get close to a weir. But here it comes. Everything changes with different water levels. While you would expect that weirs even get more dangerous with rising levels, at some point the hydraulic jump becomes a smooth, stationary wave. 
And that is what we are looking for. A stationary wave entails almost no air. The entailed air is what causes the dangerous recirculating current behind weirs, responsible for almost every single accident that has occurred in the past. We know about these dangers, and that's why we avoid them. The problem is, the public doesn't know enough about these dangers. They keep underestimating the hazards of seemingly small overflow structures while at the same time labeling river surfing as extremely dangerous. Some of these waves on the tour have been surfed for over 20 years now and there has not been a single rescue incident up to date. The police still shows up regularly at some of our surf spots. Not because they want to, they have to because some pedestrians called them. How on earth would you come up with the idea of calling the police when you see someone surfing on a river? What would you even tell the police? In most cases, the police was friendly and even fascinated by what we were doing. They treated us respectfully and explained why they had to show up. Most of the time, they would just let us continue, but made us aware that we ourselves were responsible for our own safety. Sadly, we also have been sent away a few times. Surfing on the tool is generally not forbidden. The reason stated for sending people away is self-endangerment. An interesting paragraph, since it can basically be applied to total arbitrariness of the individual police member, but does not really fulfill the requirements of proportionality in case of river surfing or kayaking. Das ist jetzt halt so, was wir machen und jetzt gehen wir einfach weiter auf die nächste Welle. Surfing on the tour is not a crime. You do not need to call the police the next time you see us. Between floods and criticism, that's the environment for our biggest passion. We had to learn that not all our friends approved of our passion. We had to accept that from time to time the police would just send us away from surf spots. We had to live with the fact that the media would again and again misrepresent us with the consequence of thousands of readers being outraged about our seemingly irresponsible behavior. But our passion for this sport remained. There was literally nothing that could have taken away our joy. Today we are facing a very different surfing landscape in Switzerland, offering a range of possibilities. Several artificial waves have already started to operate, and even more projects are on the horizon. The quality of artificial waves has improved massively and comes close to waves you would find in the ocean. Surfing in Switzerland is slowly but surely becoming mainstream. But nothing will ever beat the experience we made in flood surfing. Searching and actually finding waves that had never been surfed before. The excitement that starts to build up in view of torrential rainfalls. Watching the water levels rise and monitoring the rain radar while trying to convince your surf buddies to drop whatever they were doing and get ready. The first glimpse of the chocolate-colored water and an empty wave. Bumpy, stinky, cold and far from perfect. But it's your wave, just for you. Nothing can beat that feeling.